ओके वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून वन एंड ऑल टुडे वी कैन डिस्कस अबाउट द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ नॉन लीनियर क्वांटाइजेशन इन पीसीएम सिस्टम ओके सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव डिराइव द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर क्वांटाइजेशन नॉइस पावर एज वेल एज द सिग्नल टू नॉइस रेशियो इन यूनिफॉर्म क्वांटाइजेशन ओके सो बट वी हैव सम सॉर्ट ऑफ ड्रॉबैक इन द केस ऑफ यूनिफॉर्म क्वांटाइजेशन ओके so today we can discuss the drawback its uh, drawback and uh, how can we overcome that using non uniform quantization okay so uh, so today we can continue with this session okay so compounding in pcm systems so after this lecture you should be able to uh, learn the importance of non uniform quantization in pcm system so uh, even we have uniform quantization why we are going to Uh, like study the importance of non uniform quantization and uh, its block diagram everything you should be able to learn by this uh, session okay next uh, okay let us uh, i think if this uh, slide is visible to you i have shown you uh, the drawback of uniform quantization now in the last class we have derived the snr for pcm system what we have what we concluded we concluded that it is snr is is defined as the ratio of ratio of normalized signal power to normalized noise power okay normalized signal power to normalized noise power and uh, what is the expression for noise power we calculated it as quantization noise power we calculated as delta square by 12 delta square by 12 what is delta delta is the step size and that step size is constant for uniform quantization so always remember that quantization noise power is constant okay noise power is constant for uh, uniform quantizer because delta value is fixed once delta is fixed is a constant value then what will happen automatically the quantization noise power which is the which is the denominator part of the snr is always a constant value once it is constant snr relies or depends only on the numerator section what is the numerator part numerator consists of signal power okay and what is the signal power we assumed it as capital p but for a signal uh, m of t which is am cos omega mt we calculated the signal power as as rms value we calculated it as maximum by root 2 whole square maximum voltage is am am divided by root 2 whole square divided by r we got the signal power p as am square by 2r okay so for normalized values of resistance you can consider r value as 1 ohm so signal power will be am square by 2 okay so for a uniform quantized pcm system snr depends only on the signal power where signal power is am square by 2 because the denominator quantization noise power which is delta square by 12 which is delta square by 12 because for a uniform quantizer denominator part delta is constant as delta is constant denominator quantization noise power remains constant once the quantization noise power is constant the snr relies only on the numerator section that is numerator part which is equals to the signal power where the signal power for a signal for a cosine signal if you take with a magnitude of am you can you will get the signal power as am square by 2r or simply am square by 2 so what it mean finally the signal to noise ratio is dependent only on the amplitude of message signal okay the snr for a uniform quantized pcm signal uniform quantized pcm system is dependent only on the magnitude of message signal it is dependent only on the magnitude of message signal because it is dependent only on the magnitude signal our message signal has uh, like uh, variable magnitudes sometimes its magnitude may be high and sometimes its magnitude may be low okay now for example if the input signal magnitude is very low ante okay? if the am value is very low then what happens to the signal power it will be less once the signal power is a lower value our snr will reduce our snr will reduce 
because denominator noise power is always fixed value or a constant value okay if the amplitude of message signal become is a high value then what happens to the snr it too will increase it will also increase so what is the final conclusion here the for the uniform quantizer for the uniform quantizer the snr depends on the magnitude of message signal depends on the magnitude of message signal as the as the message signal magnitude increases our snr will increase and snr is low for the low magnitude input signal uh, so what it mean it mean that the snr for a uniform quantizer is not a constant okay because it will depend on the signal value signal magnitude so but for a particular pcm system the snr should remain stable it should not deviate from low value to high value the snr for a system should remain stable so that's why uh, we are going to discuss the importance of variable step size to provide uniform or stable snr okay so what is the final drawback of uniform quantization so uniform quantized pcm signal for the uniform quantized pcm signal the snr is not stable snr is not stable it it will be less for low magnitude input signal and it is high for high magnitude input signal so in order to provide constant or stable snr for a pcm system we will use non uniform quantization will use the non uniform quantization okay i think you are uh, now thorough with the drawback of uniform quantizer so what is the main drawback of uniform quantizer for a uniform quantizer snr is not stable okay it is not a fixed value it it uh, varies in accordance with the magnitude of input signal because the denominator step size is constant the denominator is a noise power which depends on step size because the noise power for a uniform quantized pcm system is delta square by 12 once delta is constant snr depends only on the numerator that is signal power once the signal power is magnitude signal magnitude is low snr will be low and as as the signal magnitude increases the snr will also increase but if a particular pcm system snr should be uh, should remain stable okay so that's why what you need to do you need to provide uniform like uniformity in the snr by considering the non uniform quantizer okay how can we provide constant snr or stable snr for a pcm system by varying the step size so if the numerator signal magnitude varies accordingly you have to vary the step size so that you can provide constant snr or stable snr okay what is the importance of uh, non uniform quantization variable step size is preferred or used in order to provide stable snr okay how you will vary the step size you will vary the step size in accordance with the input signal magnitude in accordance with the in accordance to input signal magnitude okay let us move to the next slide so what you can say here uh, actually you are now you are going to construct the non uniform quantizer circuit quantizer circuit but the circuit uh, like uh, construction is difficult and uh, even sometimes implementation is also difficult and also expensive so an alternate circuit alternate circuit of non uniform quantizer has been has developed has developed using uniform quantizer okay so this that process is called as compounding so what is compounding it is a process of it is a process of uh, process of generating generating the compressed signal then that compressed signal is applied to the uniform quantizer and then the signal is once again expanded to undergo the inverse action that has introduced at the transmitter okay so compounding is a combination of compression and expanding so you can see there compression okay plus 
expanding the combination of compression at the transmitter and expanding at the receiver is called as compounding so why not directly you are implementing the circuit of non uniform quantizer it is highly expensive and it is difficult to construct so that's why using uniform quantizer using uniform quantizer we are going to build or develop non uniform non uniformities okay so by using uniform quantizer itself we are going to build non uniformities in the signal let us see how you can develop non uni non linearities in the signal okay so what is the ultimate uh, uh, conclusion our uh, final thing is to provide stabilized stabilized snr final thing is to provide a stabilized value of snr okay so now uh, what this compressor will do so we are telling that the combination of compressor uniform quantizer and expanding is generally called as compounding we are telling like that now what is compressor this compressor is generally constructed at the transmitter section is used at the transmitter what this compressor will do so whenever a message signal with varying amplitudes already we know message signal is not a uh, like fixed uh, like a constant sig magnitude signal it is a continuous signal its amplitude may vary from lower value to the higher value now what this compressor do compressor amplifies the lower magnitude input okay what it will do compressor amplifies the low magnitude input and attenuates the high magnitude input so what this compressor do compressor amplifies the low magnitude input and attenuates the high magnitude input signal once you do like that you can generate a uniform magnitude input signal okay so what this will compressor will do it takes a threshold value and if our uh, message signal magnitude is lower than the threshold the signal magnitude will be amplified okay if the magnitude value is greater than that threshold the signal magnitude will be attenuated okay so compressor finally attenuates the low magnitude input and sorry amplifies the low magnitude input and attenuates the high magnitude data okay now you have generated some non linearities in the signal and finally you have generated a uniform magnitude message signal uniform magnitude message signal with uniform step size now the signal will be fed to the uniform quantizer what this uniform quantizer will do this it will convert as usual it will convert the continuous amplitude signal into discrete amplitude signal but what is the input to the uniform quantizer here not directly the sample signal it is a compressed signal so compressed signal consists of same message signal but with uniform magnitude how can you generate uniform magnitude by amplifying the low magnitude and attenuating the high magnitude you can generate non linearities this non linearities will create uniform magnitude message signal now this signal will be fed to the uniform quantizer okay now as usual this uniform quantizer will generate discrete amplitude sample discrete amplitude sample and this discrete amplitude sample okay will be processed via the encoder and at the receiver snr will be evaluated so you will get uniform like constant snr because the input consists of stable magnitude okay and but actually the input signal magnitude is now in it consisting of some sort of non linearities now you need to remove all the non linearities that you have added at the transmitter so you some sort of inverse action you have to perform at the receiver so that section is generally called as uh, expander so the so you will use an expander circuit what this expander will do this will attenuate the low magnitude input this will attenuate the low magnitude input and amplify the high magnitude input okay so attenuate the low magnitude and amplify the high magnitude input signal so that you can regain the original magnitudes of message signal okay so the process of 
compression at the transmitter and the inverse process of uh, expanding at the receiver is generally called as compounding. Okay, now please tell me what is the main drawback of non-uniform quantization? Sorry, what is the main drawback of uniform quantization? SNR is not stable because noise power is because the noise power denominator is fixed. SNR depends only on the numerator that is signal power. Signal power once again depend only on the magnitude of input signal. So for lower magnitudes SNR becomes low and for the higher magnitude SNR will be high. So to provide uh, like here you have uh, like non-uniformity in the SNR. SNR is not stable in the case of uniform quantizer. So what you will do? You will make use of non-uniform quantizer to provide uniform SNR or stable SNR. How can you provide by using the compounding circuit? So what this compounding consists of compression at the transmitter and expanding at the receiver. What is compressor? Compressor amplifies the low magnitude input and attenuates the high magnitude data. Okay, and this at the receiver, you will make use of the opposite uh, functionality of the compressor that is by using expander circuit. What this expander will do? Expander attenuates the low magnitude input and amplifies the high magnitude input signal. Okay, so you will be more clear if you go through the block diagram. Okay, just you from this slide, you please remember that compounding is a combination of compressor at the transmitter and intermediate you will have uniform quantization itself and uh, the opposite uh, the inverse action of the compressor at the receiver is expanding. Okay, let us move to the next slide so that you can uh, see the circuit for the compounding. Okay, so this is the whole block diagram of compounding. Please observe the circuit here. It consists of how many sections? Three sections. One is compressor, other is uniform quantizer and the third one is expander. Okay, so what this compressor will do? Please all of you observe the characteristics shown down to the compressor block. Please all of you observe the characteristics shown down to the compressor. So what is the compressor input? What is the compressor input? Message signal. Okay, compressor input is message signal. In the characteristics of compressor, x-axis is the input that is message signal data, direct message signal magnitude and y-axis is the output of compressor. Please see the characteristics. X-axis is the input of compressor and y-axis is the output of compressor. If you observe the x-axis, our input message signal has variable magnitudes, has variable magnitudes. That's why we mentioned here as non-uniform. So the magnitude may be low at some instant and the magnitude may be high. For lower magnitude inputs, please observe carefully. Please observe the x-axis that is input of the compressor characteristics. Please observe the values nearer to zero. So the magnitudes, lower magnitude input signal, uh, what this compressor will do? It will amplify. And what the high magnitude will do? The high magnitude input will be attenuated by the compressor. So compressor, what it will do? Please observe the x-axis first. X-axis low magnitude observe. So the lower magnitude of the input signal is amplified. That you can uh, uh, directly, we, can, we kept it uh, with the dotted lines. Please go through the dotted lines and observe the white output. In the output, you have uniform magnitude. In the output, you have y-axis. Please observe the y-axis. In the y-axis, you will have uniform magnitude. How you got uniform magnitude with this non-uniform input? The low level amplitude signals are, are amplified and high level amplitude signal input signal is attenuated. Thereby you can generate uh, the uniform output or uniform magnitude input signal at the output of compressor. 
now the output of the compressor is applied to the uniform quantizer so what this uniform quantizer will do uniform quantizer will collect the uniform magnitude message signal uh, with a fixed step size with a fixed step size and accordingly it discretizes the amplitude and accordingly it generates discrete amplitude levels okay so using that discrete amplitude levels the signal will be encoded and transmitted and finally at the receiver you can uh, get stable snr you can attain stable snr because the message signal magnitude is stable because that acts as input to the uniform quantizer that uniform magnitude message signal is obtained from the compressor okay so that's why uniform quantizer uh, as usual it will generate the snr but here the snr is stable because in the denominator delta is fixed and in the numerator if you observe the uh, compressor output its the message signal magnitude is stable so that's why uniform quantizer will generate uniform quantizer will generate a stable snr because of the usage of compressor at the transmitter section now uh, what you need to do but actually the re recollected or recovered data is of uniform magnitude but uh, the original data consists of non uniform magnitude so that's why an expander circuit is required at the receiver section this expander will do the will have the inverse action or will do the inverse action to the compressor so what this expander will do this expander will convert the uniform input magnitude message signal into the original format how this expander what is the function of expander now expander will reduce or attenuate the low magnitude input and amplify the high magnitude input to regain the original form of message signal so this is how Uh, the compressor uniform quantizer and expander will combinedly form or generate a stable snr and why we are call calling this as non uniform quantization then because here you are performing quantization but with fixed magnitude message signal okay or else we can also say that accordingly to the step size the message signal magnitude will vary and how you are varying by using the compressor low magnitude input signals are amplified and high magnitude inputs are attenuated okay so the uh, inverse action by the uh, compressor will be done at the receiver section that will be done by the expander please observe the characteristics of the uh, expander transfer characteristics of the expander down to the block so down to the block of expander you can see the transfer characteristics in this transfer characteristics x axis is the input and y axis is the output of expander now what is the input of expander input of the expander is uniform magnitude message signal uniform magnitude message signal now that is applied to the expander expander what this expander will do expander attenuates the low magnitude input and amplify the high magnitude input signal in order to convert it into original form so that you will once again generate the non uniform magnitude message signal this is how the compounding process will generate stable snr the three stages combined to give the characteristics of non uniform quantizer to generate stable snr is this block diagram okay to everyone can we move further one of you please respond please one of you respond any one of you please respond is this okay can we move further 
Is this block diagram okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, please observe the uh, compounding characteristics once again. See, in this slide, I have give, shown you the model of the simple model of compounding circuit. The simple model of non uniform quantizer consisting of compressor, uniform quantizer, and third one is expander. Okay, so here this is the simple model of non uniform quantizer consisting of compressor, uniform quantizer, and expander. Okay, now uh, here down to the model, we uh, I have shown you the characteristics. In this transfer characteristics, we have simultaneously uh, represented the compressor characteristics, expander characteristics, and the linear characteristics. This linear characteristics is the response of uniform quantization. See, we have uh, you can observe the dotted lines here in the characteristics. These dotted lines represent the transfer characteristics of uniform quantizer. So linear is nothing but uniform. Okay, so dotted lines represent the characteristics of uniform quantizer. And now the compression characteristics, compression characteristics is almost all in the uh, in the shape of S characteristics. S characteristics. Compression characteristics is in the form of S shape. Okay, and inverse S is the representation of expander characteristics. Okay, so if you observe the compressor characteristics here, uh, we can clearly recollect the, that low magnitude inputs are amplified and high magnitude inputs are attenuated. And what is the importance of expander? Expander will attenuate the low magnitude input and amplify the high magnitude input to gain the to regain the original form of message signal. Okay, this is about the characteristics. Uh, Com uh, combinedly, we represented the compression characteristics, uniform quantizer characteristics, and expander characteristics in a single graph. Okay, this graph represents the compressor character. This graph combinedly represents the compressor characteristics, uniform quantizer characteristics, and expander characteristics. And expander characteristics. If you observe the compressor characteristics, already so many times I have repeated, low magnitude inputs are amplified and high magnitude inputs are attenuated. Okay, in the case of uniform quantizer, the response is linear. Okay, it is in the straight line that passes through origin. Expander characteristics will be like, okay, so in the uniform quantizer for the linear input, you will get linear output. Coming to the expander, coming to the expander, input is uniform, but the output is non-uniform. What this expander will do? Low magnitudes are attenuated once again, and high magnitudes will be amplified. Okay, but coming to the compressor, input is non-uniform and output is uniform. For the uniform quantizer, input is input is a linear form and output is also linear which is directly proportional to the input coming to the expander expander has uniform input but the output is non uniform output is a message signal with non uniform magnitudes or we can also say that those magnitudes are same as that of the input message signal okay so let us move to the next slide so that you can see the different types of compounding. So in general, there are two types of compounding methods. So what is compounding? This is a non-uniform non quantization. This is an example for non-uniform quantization where you can provide stable SNR, where you can provide stable SNR. This compounding technique uses compressor at the transmitter and expanding at the receiver. Okay. And in general, compounding, te compounding uh, techniques are of two types. One is Mueller compounding and second one is ALA compounding. These two compounding techniques depends on certain principles. Depends on certain principle. 
or you can say it depends on certain laws. Okay, uh, those laws are represented uh, in the form of one equation, and that equation I will provide you. Okay, so in exams, if uh, you get like compounding, you should draw the circuit, and you should explain the two different types of compounding. One is mu law, and other one is a law compounding. Two types of compounding techniques. In general, this mu law compounding techniques uh, technique is uh, used in. Uh, North America and Japan and uh, ALA compounding is used in all European countries. OK, and what is the importance of these compounding techniques? This is used to compress the digital telephone signals. In general, this ALA compounding is used ALA as well as mu law. Both are used for compression. OK, and it is used to compress the digital telephone signals. And what is the need of this compression? to provide stable SNR. So signal to noise ratio should be stable. Then only you will you can receive proper signal. Otherwise you cannot receive good signal if it because if the input signal magnitude is low and if you are receiving low magnitude, then uh, SNR is not stable. Then you cannot uh, receive the signal properly. So that's why this compounding technique plays a key role key role to provide stable SNR. Even in India, ALA compounding is used. OK, so ALA is uh, used in all the European countries. And now the what are the typical values used in practice for mu law and ALA compounding for mu law? If if mu value is equal to 255, then you can provide stabilized value of SNR. OK, using this compression using this mu la compounding compression followed by expanding. If mu is equal to 255, then you can provide best SNR. And similarly, in the A la, if you uh, if the A value is uh, 87.6, you can attain good signal, good SNR. OK, so it will be more clear if you observe the characteristics of mu la and A la. We can see it in the next slide. So let us discuss first one that is Mueller compounding. This Mueller compounding relies on this principle. What is the principle? Wt of t is equal to ln that is ln base c log base c. So ln of 1 plus mu w1 of t divided by ln of 1 plus mu. Here uh, mu is a variable. Mu is a variable. Now. For example, if mu value is 0, if mu value is 0, then the response is same as that of uniform quantization, uniform quantization. Now, as the mu value increases, as the mu value increases, what happened? The W uh, as mu value, if you go on increasing, you will get good compression. So good compression means that you can uh, amplify the low magnitude input and attenuate the high magnitude uh, input signal efficiently. OK, the efficient process of compression will takes place when mu is equal to 255. OK, what is that relation? This please remember the you should remember this equation and you should represent in the examination whenever if you get this uh, types of compounding. And here uh, we have shown you the compressor characteristics. We have not shown you the expanding characteristics. So expanding characteristics will be exactly inverse to that of uh, compression characteristics, uh, which I have shown it uh, uh, two slides back. OK, so what is compressor here? Compressor amplifies the low magnitude and attenuates the high magnitude input signal. It this Mueller compounding is uh, follows uh, the particular principle shown here where w2 of t w suffix 2 of t is nothing but the output signal and w1 of t is the nothing but the input signal. Now uh, instead of w you can represent v no problem. That's your wish or you can also represent with x also. OK, so here uh, w2 is equal to ln of 1 plus mu w1 divided by ln of 1 plus mu where mu is a certain value based on the particular type of value 
our characteristics will differ. That's why this is called as Mueller characteristics. For mu zero, you will get linear characteristics, same as that of uniform quantization. As mu value increases, you will get exact yes, yes type of uh, compressor techniques, compressor waveform. Okay, here we have shown you only the positive compressor characteristics. Negative compressor, I have not shown you. Okay, so positive compressor, so half yes you will get. So once the curve reaches the left top one, we can say it is the best type of compressor. Okay, but regarding this certain law shown here, when mu is equal to 255, you can gain a stable SNR. Okay, this is about the MULA compounding. Now let us move to the second one, that is ALA compounding. ALA compounding. So what you can observe from this ALA compounding? What you can observe from this? Here this ALA compounding follows the principle shown here. What is W2 of T? As usual, W2 of T is the output signal and W1 of T is the input. Please observe this uh, characteristics. What this A is equal to 1 represents? A is equal to 1. If you keep A is equal to 1, then W2 of T is directly proportional to W1 of T. When A is equal to 1, W2 of T is directly proportional to W1 of T. Or else you can keep A is equal to 1, A is equal to 1 here. If you keep A is equal to 1, so you will get W2 of T directly proportional to W1 of T. Once uh, uh, W2 of T is directly proportional to W1 of T, the response will be linear. Okay. Or you can say the response is that of uniform quantizer. Now, as the value of A increases, gradually increases, you will get compression characteristics. You will get compression characteristics. Here also we have shown you only the com positive compressor characteristics. Okay, positive compressor characteristics. The inverse uh, action of this compressor characteristics gives you the expanding. Okay, so what is W2 of T? So whenever uh, like the input range from 0 to 1 by A, 0 to 1 by A, W2 of T will be A into W1 divided by 1 plus ln A. And if W1 range from 1 by A to 1, then the W2 will be 1 plus ln of A mod W1 divided by 1 plus ln A. So here we will consider the magnitudes of input. That's why we represented, we represented with mod. So here modulus represents the magnitude. So always the compounding process depends on the magnitude of input because that is only the factor where our SNR will depend. Okay, so that's why the output magnitude depends on the input magnitude with certain A law. That's why it is called as A law compounding. Okay, now let us move to the, these are the two types of compounding. And we have seen the certain principles for ALA compounding and MULA compounding. And we have seen the compression characteristics of MULA and ALA compounding. Okay, let us move to the next slide. Uh, I think with this uh, we can wind up. Yes. Uh, so I think uh, now you are familiar with the import. I think every, every student can be able to explain the importance of non-uniform quantization and the circuit of non-uniform quantization and uh, its characteristics and the two types of compounding. And one more thing that you should remember is that uh, when mu is equal to 255 in mu law and in a law, if a value is equal to 87.7, 87.6, these two are the typical values to attain the like best value of SNR. So with this uh, module 5 has completed, so we can uh, conclude that we have completed the compounding uh, process. So now I request a few students to give the import drawback of any one of the student. Uh, can you tell me what is the drawback of uniform quantization? Any one of the student, please come voluntarily. What is the drawback of uniform quantization? 
Uh, the SNR of the uniform condensate PCM signal is less for uh, less magnitude, ma'am. Low okay. magnitudes and more mm -hmm. for high magnitudes of input input signal, ma'am. Yes, very good. Mm. Okay, so that is a drawback of uniform quantization. Very good. So any other student, please tell me how can you overcome that uh, drawback or how can we stabilize the SNR by using non-uniform quantization? Any other student? Explain the. Compounding principle. What is the principle uh, of compounding? Other student, kindly respond. How can we overcome the problem of non-uniform or uh, varying SNR? SNR should remain stable. How can we provide stable SNR by using non-uniform quantizer? Any other student, kindly respond. Any other student kindly respond. How can we provide stable SNR by using compounding? What is the principle behind the non-uniform quantization? Any other student please respond. See, almost 51 students are there. Hmm? Why you are not responding? G9, G9, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, can you tell me the uh, principle behind compounding to provide stable SNR? Explain, please. See, I, ma, G nine. Yes. Please explain. Yes. Yesterday. Yesterday. I I did not listen to class, madam. That's why I can't. When you did not listen today or yesterday? Yesterday, madam. Yesterday. See, <laughs> see, I'm asking question from today's class itself. And uh, one more thing that I want to say that I kept the slide that you want. Okay. So I'm asking question from the slide uh, that you can see. Actually, I'm not asking from somewhere. And the direct can be convenient to go under the near slide. Could I have it? Then hmm? 
what is the principle behind non uniform quantization to provide stable snr the pros E9, ma E9 undara. E9. Okay, you tell me the principle behind compounding. Okay, G9, thank you. But you listen the class. Yesterday class, okay, you left. At least today's session, you should listen. E9, you please tell me the principle behind compounding. By the help of compression and expanding. Yes, compressor. It's by fine. using compressor behind the transmitter. Before. Oh, okay. And uh, mm. expanding at the receiver. Okay. What is compression? Which amplifies the low magnitude input and attenuates the high magnitude input signal. Yes, very good. And what is expanded? Which attenuates the low magnitude input and amplifies the high magnitude input. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, Okay, uh, how many blocks this compounder will consist of? Can you explain the block diagram of compounding? My E9. Yes, can you explain the importance of, uh, or can you explain the block diagram of compounding? Yes, mm, explain. Compressure. Low magnitude signals you amplify the signal. Okay, very good. Fixed. And then uh, high magnitude now at me at the HST. Okay, very and good. Because so of non that, uh, we get hmm. non-linear signal. Yes, non-uniform input is converted into uniform magnitude input signal. And you are adding some non-linearities. Okay. Which generates discrete amplitude sample. Which one? From uniform quantizer. Yes, uniform quantizer generates discrete amplitude sample for the corresponding input. Okay, good. Next. And then to expand the uh, attenuates the low magnitude input. Yes. And amplifies the high magnitude uh, high magnitude input signal. Yes. So that you can get the original form of the input signal. So with this we can say that because the ma magnitude of input signal is constant, our SNR remains. Constant. constant. Okay, okay, ma. Thank you. Very good. And thank you. And this is the combined characteristic shown in a single graph. And uh, any other student, can you tell me uh, how many types of compounding techniques are there? Any other student? F0 is there? F0. F0. F2. F2. Narma. F2. Why you are not responding at least to me? So instead of answering at least, please respond whether you answer or not. No problem. First you respond. F2, are you there or not? Uh, can you explain the two types of compounding? How many types of compounding techniques are there? Mula and Ela compounding. Yes. What is Mula compounding? What? When mu is equal to zero, which type of uh, response you will get in compounding technique? In Mueller compounding, if mu is equal to zero, the characteristics is same as that of? No. No. Uni linear characteristics and the uniform char quantization characteristics. And what is the best value to attain good SNR in the case of Mueller?
what is the best value u 255 and uh, in the a la when a is equal to 1 you will attain linear characteristics and when a is equal to 87.6 you will get uh, like stable snr okay okay ma thank you very much please kindly respond to my uh, like uh, call okay thank you and uh, so with this we can stop the session and one more thing is in the next tomorrow session we can continue with differential pcm and uh, uh, till now we have completed the pcm section okay so like we have completed the uh, pcm block diagram and the limits we have completed and then we have calculated the uh, signal to noise ratio and its quantization noise power for uniform quantizer and then we have seen the importance of non uniform quantization compounding and uh, you should learn and uh, also you should note that there are some drawbacks in this pcm okay and we in the next class we can see the drawbacks and how can we overcome using differential pcm and we can complete the differential pcm by tomorrow's class because one class is enough for that and in the differential pcm we will see the modified circuit of pcm okay in pcm we have certain drawbacks and the circuit will be modified by using some prediction filters the filters will be added and that modified the circuit of pcm you can observe you can observe okay uh, that you can see in the next class so in the next class we can discuss the differential pcm circuit and the drawbacks of pcm and how the dpcm will overcome that differential pulse code form okay the short form is dpcm okay next class we can complete that and then we can go to the delta modulation okay any doubts in the today's session uh, meanwhile i will take the attendance